In these bottles you can see a couple liters of highly corrosive super acid called chlorosulfonic acid. Today I will use this to show you how dangerous exactly the super acid is so you know what the real acid made by chemists is capable of doing. Trust me, it's a lot worse than you might think. You should definitely avoid tripping on this acid because it won't be pretty. Instead, it is by definition any acid stronger than concentrated sulfuric acid. In order to demonstrate this, let's pour some concentrated sulfuric acid over my skin. You can see that my hand survived this no problem, but the paper towels beneath get eaten proving it is real concentrated sulfuric acid. Please refrain from repeating any of these experiments at home. Now let's repeat this experiment using super acid. Haha, <laughs> you said I'm that stupid to pour super acid on my skin? No thanks. We'll use some pig skin instead for that. Now you can see that you wouldn't exactly want to get this on your skin. This would be extremely painful. The pig skin was cooked and burned quite thoroughly just by pouring the acid on it. So of course you need to wear gloves, but you can't just wear any gloves. Regular nitrile and latex gloves just get eaten immediately and don't offer any real protection. Only these super expensive thick gloves made of a fluoropolymer are an effective barrier against this acid. We have all learned that you can't compare apples and oranges, however before the great super acid they are all equal. They basically turn completely into a black sludge if you have enough acid. This also creates a lot of highly corrosive acid vapor. The reason that the fruits get eaten so violently is that the acid reacts violently with the water contained in the fruit to form hot sulfuric and hydrochloric acid. Those hot acid molecules are capable of destroying pretty much any living tissue. In order to safely dispose of the acid and this brown sludge, we can just add powdered lime and water which will neutralize it effectively. Also, you learn in school that you should never pour water into acid. The obvious conclusion from this is that we pour some water into super acid. But I prefer not getting splashed by this hot acid that can eat your skin in seconds. That is why I want to thank Thai Labs for building this construction for this video. Wunderbar! While we are at it, Big thanks also goes to Advanced Tinkering. Thank you both so much for helping me perform these dangerous experiments. You should definitely check out both of their channels, they are amazing. This results in quite a spectacular explosion, because first the water reacts with the chlorosulfonic acid to produce hydrochloric and sulfuric acid plus a lot of heat. The remaining water reacts with the acid producing even more heat which turns all the water into steam. All that gas produced in such a short period of time is what causes that explosion. This was used during World War II to create giant corrosive smoke screens. Now after pouring in quite a lot of lime to the remaining acid, I added some water to dilute it down, not expecting anything, but surprisingly it exploded on me, completely ripping apart the plastic bucket it was in. Elias hat es auf Kamera. Ich bin enttäuscht, was du gerät aus einem macht. Meine erste Reaktion war Lizzie, es ist auf Kamera. Das ist nicht okay. Ja. Er ist auf Kamera. Luckily I was basically unharmed, but this highlights that you can never be too safe with chemicals like this. This acid is not just capable of reacting with water and living tissue, it is also able to eat through plastic. So if we put a coke bottle in the super acid, it slowly gets eaten until 7.5 minutes later, this happens with the coke bottle. After the coke bottle is weakened enough, the pressure forces out the coke into the super acid that vigorously reacts with the water containing coke. The cleanup of this was also a giant royal mess and it exploded again, this time however not quite as bad.
the plastic container we did this on also has some permanent scars now from this experience. Now the acid isn't able to dissolve all kinds of plastics that quickly and this cute rubber duck managed to survive the acid besides some minor discolorations quite well. For the last experiments we wanted to show you what happens when we mix a super acid with its opposite extreme, a super base. However, before we get to that, we first reacted the super acid with a regular strong base using solid sodium hydroxide that is also used as drain cleaner. It was quite a vigorous reaction, but nothing too wild. But I remembered from my concentrated acid versus concentrated base video that dissolving the NaOH in water before the reaction can make it quite a bit more vigorous. The violence of this reaction was however quite unexpected. It was almost a detonation completely blowing the glass apart. You never know with these kinds of reactions and that's why we decided to not scale this reaction up. Instead we moved on to the great finale and let it react with one of the strongest super bases you can buy as a chemist, N-butyl lithium. We started small with about 50 milliliters of this murky liquid. It is really sensitive to air and moisture, so we had to use special air-free techniques to transfer it into this round bottom flask. It was quite a beautiful red flame caused by the lithium metal. Because it didn't cause a detonation, we figured that it can be scaled up safely, so we poured in the rest of the super base into a bucket filled with argon, which was about 600 milliliters. We then added an equal amount of the super acid and stood well back to watch the mayhem. This was certainly one of the most scary and beautiful reactions I ever filmed. The remaining flame could not even be extinguished with a fire extinguisher because of the leftover pyrophoric superbase. <laughs> but some water did the job of destroying it quickly. Thanks a lot for watching and to Scilabs and Advanced Tinkering for helping me make this crazy video possible.